Hello everybody. So today we are going to be learning how to use Adobe Muse to build a website. If you're familiar with InDesign or Photoshop, Adobe Muse is a, a breeze to learn to make websites. So first, um, you will either find Adobe Muse on your toolbar or in the computer labs They on Windows, they are on um, the home screen. So if you click that, it'll open up. So once it opens, you'll just go over to create new site. And you'll click site. It'll say fluid width, maximum width, columns, gutter. You can leave all of that and just hit OK. So now what this does is it creates a master page and it creates your first page for your home page. So if you think about pages like a home page and when you click on a link on a website it takes you to photos or it takes you to their store or their contact me page, that's what websites are. Now what master pages are, are the background and everything that you want to apply to specific pages across, that are uniform across all of the pages. So what you can do to start out with is if you hover over the home icon, you will see plus arrows on each side. So if you click one of those, it'll insert a new page. And so we can name this page History. And we will be adding in the history of Winterset and the library and giving some background information on that. If you click another page, we will do a page for photos. And that will, page will include all of our self-portraits that we did for the self-portrait project. And then we will click another page and we'll have a contact me page. And let's actually call that a contact us. So if you want to rename a page, you just double click on it and hit us. You can change that. So now what we'll do next is we'll open up our master page. So to open up the master page, you go down to masters and you double click on the big white icon. Once this opens, yeah, okay, we're not gonna worry about that today. So Adobe Muse does have a cool feature where as the page shifts for smaller monitors and for phones and tablets, you can change the layout. That's more advanced stuff than we're going to get into, so we are just going to stick to the basics. So on your main page, you can create a header, which will be the top of the page where you'll have your logo or your page name, your menu, um, other design aspects up there, and then you'll have a footer that you can include your social media links, your contact me links, um, more in-depth detail page links. And so what we're going to do to begin with is if you come over here to your widgets library and you click on menus and you click on horizontal, you can just click and drag this in. And if you look, it has all of the pages that we've already laid out. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this by clicking and dragging you can see that there will be a little red arrow that will mark that I'm on my header. And I'm going to stretch this across. So this is an interesting little thing here. So if you move that and you click on here, you can see that it'll have top level pages. You can include all pages or you can do manual pages. When you do manual pages, if you have a page that you only want to be redirected to through special links that you don't want on the header, that you don't want up in here in the menu, you can do manual and set what pages go where. Or if you want a menu bar that goes to a separate page not on your website, you could also do manual. But for us, we're just going to leave it on top level pages. You want it to go horizontal. We can go vertical and see that you know, that would be good for a phone layout or a web design where you've got that along the side and then things are 
protruding out from that, but we're going to leave that on horizontal. You want to edit them together, keep them a uniform size. You can see uniform spacing will space them out equally. Uniform size keeps all the buttons the same size. We don't want the left icon on. We do want the label on. You want to keep this so it only has an icon if there are submenus. And then you can leave the parts positioning on horizontally centered. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this back over now that we've got our settings. We're going to drag our header down a little ways. Probably put that at like 101 pixels. If you click on an object and hold shift on your keyboard, it'll only move it in one direction, either up and down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it right here. And that leaves us room to put a title up here. So what I'll do is I'll click the text tool or shortcut key T on your keyboard and if you click and drag you can see that it'll create a text box. From there we can change what the font are and now you can see that there are system fonts. You do not want to use these because these will export your font as a image and it'll be unsearchable when you search things on Google. So you'll want to stay within the standard fonts or you can add web fonts. So I'm just going to leave it on Arial you can see you've got your text size, your text color, all of your text attributes all across the top, and you can also do hyperlinks, which we will get into later. So first, I'm just going to say winter set library web page, and I'm going to press control A, or you can highlight everything by dragging your mouse, and I'm going to center this. I'm going to press the selection tool or shortcut V on your keyboard. Nope, oh, don't want to do that, so control Z. So if you just click on this, you can see I can reposition where this is at. And now again while holding shift, I will recenter this. And as you get to the center, you'll see a little marker that tells you that you're center on the page. And now I want this this header to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to drag this box out again, highlight everything, control A, and let's go 30. That's too much. Let's go 24. There we go. So now I will drag this out, and we will center this. So there you go. Now when you look, if you go back to your website one up here in the tabs area, you can see that this is the main area. You can see across all of our pages, we have a menu and a header. So now we'll go back to the master by either clicking it up here in the tab or down here in the master. And now if you look up the top, you have a fill, a stroke, and a browser fill. So what we'll do first is we will click the arrow next to the browser fill and it'll bring up a little menu. And you can see if I click a color, it fills the entire browser with that color. I'm going to go with a gray color, but you can pick whatever color you would like. So now you can see that in this little area right here, you will see that's where you're going to put your content. So what I'm going to do is click on this fill area here, and I'm going to click white, and you can see that it fills everything. This has changed since I last used it. Actually, I think what it does is everything in here will have your content. But if anything is bigger than their screen, it will fill this content out here with this browser fill color. So we will go ahead and keep this white. And then we will go ahead and click on our menu icon and if you click again you can see that it highlights just each individual box. Up here in the left hand corner you see menu item normal 
if you click on that, you can see that there are different states. Now what a state is, is when you roll over an icon, or you mouse down on an icon, or if the icon is activated, you can see that they will have different effects. So as we roll over it, it grays out. When we mouse down it, it gets darker. And when it's active, it's a lighter gray, but still darker than the normal state. So what you can do on here is if you click one of these, and then click on your fill, and you click you know, whatever color you'd like. So if we click red, you can see the normal state for all of these icons will be red. Now what I want to do is I want to make these a darker red by just dragging this right here down, and you can see they all become a darker red. Now if you click on normal, click on rollover, you can see that your fill color changes yet again. You can click on this again, we'll do red, we'll do a little bit of a lighter but still dark red. We'll do mouse over, and I'm going to change this again to red. Brighter but still not full red yet. And then when it's active, I'm going to do a full red color. So now if we go back to the web one, you can see that it updates across all of the pages. So the master page is applied to all of these pages and anything you change on your master page that has, and the pages have the A master page applied, will have those changes. So if you want a page with a different layout, you can create more master pages and apply those to pages as well. So we're gonna go back to our master page. Just get rid of that red line since it annoys me. Next, what you can do is we are going to want a contact me button down at the bottom. So what you'll do is you can drag a whole thing across here, a whole text box, and you can insert a contact me button. I don't know why I dragged it all the way across. We just need one button. And we'll make sure it's underneath the footer line. And I'm going to go ahead and center that. Again, we're keeping everything very basic. So, what you'll do now is over here under hyperlinks, up at the top, if you click on hyperlinks, you can add or filter your links. You can make a link to any of your pages. You can link to a file. So what this does is it makes it a link that you can click on and it will do something. So if I were to click desktop, when I would click this, it would take your home, I'm sorry, not desktop. When I would click this, it would take me to my home page. So what I want this to do is I want this to So this is change. Let me look up one thing really quick and we will resume shortly. Okay, so one thing that they've changed in Muse since I, when I should not have is they have created a more user-friendly, you just, so while I'm clicked on contact me, if you just enter your email and hit enter, it will create a link that says mail to my email. Now what that will do is when someone clicks on this link, they will visually be able to, or they will be taken to their default emailing app, whether that be opening up a Gmail link or on their phone opening up whatever email they use there, and it will automatically in put my email into their box and allow them to shoot me an email straight from 
their Muse website. So, just like all the other links, if you go over to text frame and click normal, you can see that they're all black. What I want this to do is when I roll over it, I apologize, first you need to press T, click and highlight everything. Or press T and just be on the box. Okay, so press T and then just be make sure you're inside this box. Nope, okay, so press, click on the box, press T, and you can see this changes to text. So, if you click on normal, you can see that they're all black. When I click on rollover, if I change this to this red color, you can see that it changes here for when I'm rolled over it. And same with mouse down. And when it becomes activated, I want this to become a red, but I want it to be a darker red. So now what that will do, is if we put this back to normal and someone hovers over it, it will appear red, letting them know that this box is able to be clicked and someone can contact me by clicking on that box. So that concludes the basic laying out of master pages. As you can see, they're all applied through across all these pages. If we click on one of these pages by double clicking, you can see that the home button is highlighted because we are on the home page and we can start adding content to these pages and they will all be separate whereas the master page will be applied to all of them. So this concludes the first tutorial and we will get into the second one.